Okay, thank you. Uh, so my name is Chris Van Hayes. Uh, I work for Oracle in the language and tools department and I've been working um, on T-Trace for, I don't know, longer than I can remember at this point, probably about 13 years. Um, so um, I'm going to go give a very, very brief overview. Otherwise, you know, we're gonna blow through the 20 minutes just talking about D-Trace is. Um, give a bit of a very brief status update and then get into some of the challenges um, that we're dealing with. So very, very, very high level, D-Trace really exists to um, consider that you have an existing system, it's doing something unexpected, you wanna know what's going on. And ideally you wanna do this without having to reboot the system, you know, a typical tracing scenario, and ideally as stable as possible, obviously. Um, so it's a programmable tool uh, that can do dynamic tracing. So we have uh, a scripting language in which you can write your tracing scripts, uh, specify what's probes um, you want to uh, attach to and what you want to do uh, when they fire. So there's clauses can be associated, can be conditional clauses. So it's very dynamic in the sense that it can respond to um, trace events. At the moment, a probe is happening, you can you know, identify what else is happening and I can modify how you then respond to later events. Uh, and that's kind of the, the strength behind it. You really want to be able to script a whole session of, of tracing. So where are we with this? Um, so right now we're very close to feature parity with what is officially, I would say, documented as D-Trace um, as a product. Uh, there's a few small things that uh, we're still working on, but I would say, in terms of functionality for re being able to do tracing, um, you're probably about 98% there. So it's really pretty much where, where we wanted it to be. Um, and we've also actually just in the past couple of weeks, decoupled it from uh, some kernel patches that we were depending on that are not upstream, which was kind of really a hindrance to be able to use it um, on upstream kernels. So it imposes some minor limitations it's still better to have them, but at least um, you can trace now without those. So that's the big thing. It works with standard upstream kernels without additional patches. That very thin line that we need is kind of the disclaimer that lists the few things that currently are limitations. And you know, I'll get to that. Um, so where are the challenges? So one challenge, which is not so technical, is the fact it's a product. So we have to support it on a whole range of kernels and BPF is still going through quite some changes and has been going through changes as we have been implementing d on top of it. And we still have to support those older kernels. So uh, we're limited to using sometimes features that we could do better with helpers that now exist, but we just don't have them. Um, and we've very much uh, had issues with the verifier as the verifier has been um, improved a lot. It also has changed in behavior a bit. So it is sometimes hard to um, to deal with that. But there are complications. It has to do with the fact that you know, we need to be able to support it on multiple kernels and it's something you can put up with. Um, the verifier still is like, I would say one of the primary ones um, in the sense that you know we're generating BPF code dynamically from a D script. And we need to, to the extent that we can, guarantee that the program we're generating is not going to be rejected uh, by the verifier. And that has posed quite some problems. Um, so there is the fact that we have limited state tracking. Uh, we find out that, you know, something that I can guarantee for myself is, you know, code that is valid, especially if it's a very small function, the verifier may still reject because it doesn't know what the semantics are that are being encoded. Um, and it has a limit. It can only evaluate 1 million instructions, which seemed like a very big limit until we started actually trying it. And because the programs we generate, again, these are often fairly long running, fairly complex tracing uh, programs, the verifier sometimes has to go through all the possible um, values to, for instance, make a function call to verify that this call is valid for all those values. And it just blows through those million instructions like in no time. So that has been kind of a, a big headache and this is an area in which we definitely would like to make some improvements and, and help with that. 
Um, just to, as a very basic example, um, so this little loop, if you just, you have um, I is my uh, iterator value that I'm using, which is bound from zero to 10, and I know J is also gonna go from zero to 10, uh, the verifier does not notice. So it is basically going to uh, assume that it can be the entire range of, in this case, possibly a 64-bit value. And um, if this is a more complex function body, it's going to then evaluate this for every single value like that. And that's gonna, you know, you can, it's never gonna pass the verifier to be valid. So we have to like very craft, be very crafty with our code to make sure that we don't introduce things like that. Um, the tracing subsystem is what makes it all possible. We still find some issues with it, which does not mean it's not good. It just means that, you know, we're pushing it and we, we find some things. So one of the annoying ones, and it's more towards user visibility, it's not, not, not from a technical side as much for us, but there are functions that are listed in available filter functions, which would generally make the assumption that you can probe them. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can put a K, K probe on those functions that, for instance, the uh, entry and address. So that makes it a little bit difficult because one of the functions in Dtrace is to be able to list what probes you can implement. Okay, now if I can be here, heard, but oops, just make sure I don't, yeah, I know it's over here, but just, um, so wait, you're saying that the available filter functions are, you know, something you can't put a probe on? Or like the, a K probe? Are, or? We, we found some functions in there that if we try to put a probe on the entry address for the function, it actually, uh, the kernel will reject it. It doesn't place the probe. What, do, like a K probe? Yeah. Do you have anything that, like, you should switch over to using F trace? Um, wait. <laughs> So if you users are uh, field using that uh, something like a wild card or filtering mm -hmm. that the same uh, or say that are uh, multiple functions uh, mm -hmm. which are just one uh, program or uh, what say that the, you you will run uh, the different program on the each, uh, different uh, each or uh, what say that are the functions yeah so, yeah we usually do uh, one program per function that is being solved uh, okay. but it's in this case it's so, um, I mean, we're, we're switching that a little bit, but it's kind of one of the issues that um, I was using one of the functions to implement um, an exit probe for when the process exits. And so, um, task stats exits is a function that is listed in there. And when you actually try to, and I even did it manually by just echoing uh, to the K probes events file, and it won't do it. Apparently, the function. And I don't know if it's because the compiler optimization did something. No, that's, if, it's in a, yeah, if you was, see it in available filter functions, that means ftrace has access to it, which means if you enabled function tracing on that, does it show up in function tracing? Because if uh, I haven't tried, that's what I, I was going to. I just figured if I use f uh, entry probes, it probably will. Yeah, that then it should work, right? Yeah, it should work. So okay. that yeah. So it's another good argument to get away from <laughs> k probes as much as we can. Yes. Okay. So definitely we'll do that. Um, so another thing that, that we find that it's, you know, it's, it's more of a, a user thing is sometimes probe creation failures can be a bit obscure and this can be, this is a combination of if it's a matter of whether we can create the probe that there's, there's at least some clarity there because it's, it's fairly well understood. Sometimes the attaching of PPF seems to fail. So we're trying to investigate what some of those uh, areas are and it seems at least from my perspective, that the um, that's if any, any form of error reporting is rather limited, which either is usually something like an enoent or an e invel, and then you can figure out beyond that uh, what the real reason might be. Um, and then creating and removing K probes and U probes um, can be slow, which moving away from K probes for at least function boundaries is not much of a problem. The U probes is a bit of an issue. I mean, do we have uh, the uh, multi? Yeah, I would like to know that there are how many uh, functions uh, you would like to or trace. Uh, uh, what is that? that how? Uh, what's we're talking the about order of the... We're talking about like in order of about 10, 20,000. 
Oh, <laughs> with K probes? That's yeah. Or, yeah. Even if we that's use when our, we need the uh, function tracing. No, no. But. Even if we use the function tracing, that will be slow. Yeah, I uh, tried to check that. Uh, I think that are uh, more than ten years ago. I think I have our. Uh, made or something like a, a trying a trial to uh, to put that uh, the K probes on their uh, function entry, but yeah. uh, that is that should use uh, the, the F trace, yeah, because of the function right. entry K probes uh, using that the F pro uh, sorry uh, F trace uh, to trace that, but uh, the the problem is uh, to uh, say that the accessing. Uh, I say that uh, there are many uh, program uh, hundreds, k probes hundreds on their uh, uh, set uh, on the different functions, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, those functions will uh, also when the the function called uh, call back, uh, then uh, it try to find that uh, the appropriate uh, also the the call back uh, from the hash table and the uh, hash. Currently, the hash K probes hash, hash table is very uh, small. Okay, but yeah. Uh, well, actually, another thing is, um, have you looked into actually just registering with F trace? If you're doing, if you just instead of putting a K probe, if you're doing forty thousand things, you can easily just get an F trace handle, and it will give you and just uh, if your infrastructure just says register this with the F trace. Yeah. You create an F trace ops. Use mm -hmm. the, it has a hash where you can say set filter function, then set all okay. the functions you want to attach to. We can do it by uh, IP address or whatever. And then you get a callback handler that gives you the F trace regs that yeah, you then yeah. extract everything okay. you want from it. Okay, that works. Then I guess U probes is then still the remaining problem, probably. U probes yeah, would U still be a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah U probes is very slow because of the, that is just for mm -hmm. uh, also replacing the, the P trace interface. Yeah, yeah so that they're not using the, the signal. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's still very slow because of the it uh, interrupt that the user space and uh, uh, yeah need to uh, emulate that the original instruction mm -hmm. inside the kernel. Yeah. So <laughs> so that's that's the, still an aspect that we're going to be looking at some different solutions yeah. to try to get away with that. Um, so another thing we have, and this is fairly specific to D trace, but I think it's um, it has come up over the past couple of years with other traces as well as a as a concept is that. Um, symbol names that exist in modules, um, a convenient way to refer to them is by module name as, as a pair, the module name and the symbol name. But then if you have a module that can be either built in or it can be loadable, it's based on the configuration of how the kernel was built. And often like a trace script might be written to uh, support tracing uh, a specific functionality where we don't necessarily know if the kernel that is gonna be running against has this as a built-in module or as a um, loadable module. And so if it is as a loadable module, then this naming will work perfectly fine because we can you know, look in uh, KL sims and the module name is associated with the symbol, but for mod built-in modules, that's not the case. And so we had some previous work um, trying to resolve that, um, but that's, you know, we kind of came up with a different solution. So what I'm currently proposing and, and I'm working on um, getting a kernel patch um, submitted to upstream, which hopefully will be um, well received, is using the linker map data that is that generated during the kernel build. This is one of the options you can do and generate a list of addresses um, within the kernel that are associated with um, code and data that belongs to a certain built-in module. So just a, a very small file, essentially text file that can be installed under lib modules that then given an address, if you can very quickly look up if actually this belongs to a built-in module and so you can have that name correspondence. I guess the question there is um, <clears throat> whether or not, it's like, okay, you have to put that someplace, that text file. So I, maybe mm -hmm. it's like a proc, I don't know what the name is. Well, well typically it would, would be like, it could be under like lib modules as a regular file. Um, Wait, lib modules? So, like lib modules uh, on the file system where all the loadable modules are stored and oh. there's already a couple of files there that have to do with built-in modules. Oh, you mean make it as like just, oh, so it won't be... Literally a text file. Oh, basically a text file. It's not something like interface to the kernel that tells no. you. It's just that when with this VM Linux, here's all mm -hmm. the things, so it's just another thing. Oh, God. Yeah. That, I think that would be a trivial 
So it's, can, yes. that can be combined with the call, okay, yeah. all sims in from to have that, that naming convention. And, and I think anybody can benefit from that to be able to have like more consistent um, working I, symbols. I think it's gonna be more for distribution, whether or not at all. I mean, to basically yeah. to get like, it's you know, like you have a sim map table when you build your kernel, you get a bunch of some other extra files. So it sounds like you just want this file to say, yeah. um, I don't know if there might, I don't know what the sim map has, if sim map could actually even include that. Is anyone familiar with that? I'm not really what's sure what's in those files. Because there are other files in there that might even yeah. already have that information. Yeah, I don't think it's in a system map because the system map is generated. Well, it depends on how the kernel is built, but yeah. depending on how you build it, um, often the final VM Linux is built from a VM Linux.o file, yeah. which already has all the objects linked in, and then no longer has the information about which uh, compilation units symbols came from. Right. And the system map is based on that. So uh, I actually wonder whether that information is reliable or like you can really get that if you think about uh, like a link time uh, across the cross file inline, right? Like you build everything in VMLinks.o, you can totally like uh, you inline something, it's not a module, you, mean, you can inline into a different function. Well, and, like, usually with module built in, they're usually they're, they're very seldom cross module stuff. I mean, there will be code, you only worry about the main functions that are built or would normally be in a module. So we do a module, like when you do built in, like, you know, instead of saying M, you put asterisks in your make menu config. So it's built into the kernel. Those files are usually are not going to be pulled in, but the link time optimization, LTO, would probably, might actually cause pain with that. Um, well, right now what I'm doing is I'm deriving information from the actual linker map. Yep. So I, I know where the linker has placed. Yeah, but it could also remove, we can remove stuff too. Um, yeah, but, but the linker map lists exactly what how the final object is created. Right. I don't know enough about that. Anyone yeah. else is expert in link? Well, we have a uh, compiler person here, but I don't know about the okay, well, no. <laughs> 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 no, no, we're just saying if like, um, ideally just here, I'll just give a quick overview of what it basically is. He just needs information of um, when you build the kernel, you could do it either as a loadable module or you can say build it in. So it's just built like linked right into the, the VM Linux. Yeah. So the question is, would like LTO or something like that mess everything up if you, because he wants to give just a bunch of addresses so he knows where like this address range or these, this address range is from this function that was built in. So the question is, will LTO mess all that up or will he still the final linker script or the final linker object or whatever uh, gives you the information that this is where he, I guess he just wants to know that this was built in. This wasn't. This is like module code that's built in. Well, I mean, you are working with. Uh, you're, 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 yeah. I mean, you have symbols, and mm -hmm. if you know those symbols that are function symbols, right? Then you can determine what corresponds to each symbol to each function. Well, well the thing is, then there's multiple. You have one symbol that's it's the same in ten different functions. Oh, yeah, obviously, it's static. It's, it's, it's still basically. Well, yeah. Function. Then you link. And uh, so, but are you using LTO? Well, some people are. Yeah, I'm sure you might be able to. But anyway, we're actually at time. Yeah, okay. So we have to look at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about it. You guys like work together, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's, so, um, actually, I guess if I can add one plug within like two seconds, variable data in PTF. <laughs> we just come up everywhere, so. <laughs> okay. We want it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.